So after the showing the client the first uh, video and discussing, you know, all of the elements that I wanted to include and, um, you know, how it wouldn't really be possible to include all of them um, under the original budget, the client was um, amenable to um, amending the budget so that more of those elements could be included. So what I wanted to do here is just give a quick overview of the way I envision all of that coming together um, and give a better sense of, of what the final uh, layout is going to look like. So general arrangement, of course, isn't going to change, but I wanted to just touch base on a few of the major elements. So first, the idle. Um, as I mentioned before, putting it up on a platform is, I think, the way I want to go, um, but I have uh, come up with a system for the turn counter and um, it will incorporate magnets to allow you when you turn it to you know sort of click into place like that like a ratchet almost um, I feel really good about that system actually the only thing that I have a, a question on is how to incorporate it into the idols foundation I can come up with some ideas on that I, I think I've, I've got that worked out but more importantly what kind of symbols to put around it to denote um, which turn it is. Uh, I don't want to just put numbers because it breaks the illusion of, of the board, but I want to make sure that the symbols I put on it are easily understandable by the opponent as well. So I can't just put, you know, a, a shield with Mork's face on it and a shield with a spider on it and then say that's turn one that's turn two right it, it should be easier to understand so if anybody knows of any sort of orc language I tried to look around a little bit and um, I decided maybe they're just illiterate so there is no language but if anybody has ideas on symbols to use that they've maybe seen around or something like that let me know I'm going to give that some more thought um, there's still a little more time before I have to really nail that down Again, as I mentioned in the um, uh, computer uh, uh, section of this video, you know, have the altar facing in. See, if I have the altar facing in, the goblin, you know, behind the altar, if you will, will be facing this way thematically. Now, of course, it's up to, you know, the client's orientation, but I want to I wanna design it to, to take that into account. If I pull the aisle altar forward, then I can put the shaman behind it like he's working at the altar and then the shaman is facing forward um, so he's not facing the idol but i think that's probably a better arrangement since you know you don't have to face the idol to worship it right it's just being in its presence um, will will give you enough of an effect so that is i think the way i'm going to go pull the altar forward so that the shaman can sit behind it facing out Unless, uh, you know, um, I'm always amenable to, there's my, amenable is the word today, I guess, uh, to changes as um, recommended. So in thinking about the boss hut, it's going to probably be bigger than what's shown here. I'm thinking it's going to be four and a half inches tall, maybe, and five inches deep, I think. Um, so what is it right here? Just to give a little sense here, each square is... Um, one inch, so one, two, three, four. Well, all right, so it might not be that much larger than what's shown. Mm, it might go back six. I don't, I'm not quite sure. But it'll have to be orientated right in a way that it fits, and I want the walkway to come out over it. Plus, I need a little space for the elevator hardware, if you will. And then when it comes down, I need to have a little room for the winches and if the client's okay with the snotling idea, then um, you know I need some room for them to walk. Um, even if there isn't room for them in the board, uh, you know, e I mean, uh, even if they don't come out all the way, I need, in, in my opinion, to have at least enough space to give them the appearance that they could travel further than what is shown. So. Um, I'm going to have to think a little bit about that arrangement and it might mean, you know, pushing maybe the Arachnorok over just a little, maybe pulling it forward just a smidge, um, you know, something like that. Uh, maybe pull the, the Savage Orcs forward just a touch and then I can pull the Spider Rives forward just a touch. Um, but I think that's all going to be workable. Uh, but that, that kind of gives you a sense of how this might change in here. For the swamp, 
So originally when I, um, I started sending some proposals to the client, I actually had this grand vision of, of lighting it and then um, having like a diorama under the water with the skeletons and, and rusted weapons and all of that. And that's really a pretty insane idea. Um, it would look awesome, but that's, it's, that's a huge section to try to, to pull off. So um, basically I want to scale that back and, um, you know, have plants, have fish swimming and make the, you know, fewer fish than I originally thought, but I want to have a couple like dramatic, you know, chases with the fish or something like that. That's really going to be interesting viewing it uh, from the viewing ports on the side here. So that is um, a modification, uh, you know, to sort of uh, keep it within the budget, but still make it look, I think, pretty awesome. Now, using the Goblin Town walkways, it occurred to me that then I could put in a dock um, not too difficultly. And so I might change this a little bit for how far back it goes. And then I'm going to have to actually sit down and look at it once I get to this stage of actually cutting all this stuff out and maybe have a dock that looks like it's coming out here, you know, and uh, and trim it. And that might look pretty cool and wouldn't add um, tremendously to uh, the swamp area in terms of work. So those are my thinkings on the swamps. Um, and I wanna have the plants laser cut so that I can get some unique shapes and some unique, uh, um, uh, you know, heights and, and whatnot without me trying to hand cut out plants that are just gonna be really too difficult um, that for the detail that I want. Uh, and I'm going to be talking to the people who I finally contract for laser cutting for the, um, the elf, uh, town project and then work that in. And I'd also like to do that with some, um, land plants, um, cut some ferns, cut some, uh, arrowhead plants and you know, some other kinds of plants. Uh, and then I could really have some nice detailed plants, um, you know, around the, the shore of the swamp and really give it, um, you know, a nice backdrop uh, visually when you look at the swamp and then come back into the board. Now for the large tree, um, and uh, I'm in the, in the effort to not make this video uh, in terms of shooting it too much longer, um, a lot of time just to script this one. Um, I want to show you the tree I've been working on and I understand it's not the best look, but you should be able to get a general sense of the idea. So um, I'm using a wire armature technique and um, I have, I think it's Gordon Gravitz wire books, uh, wire tree books, um, super helpful in uh, coming up with, uh, you know, ideas and techniques for this. And this is going to be the large tree. and. Uh, I am loving how it has been coming out. Uh, it has been a little bit of a learning experience, but I think it's going to be totally awesome. And so, you know, part of it, like I said, will be dead. Uh, maybe this branch here. And then part of it, you know, will be foliated. Foliated? I think that's right. And then my big thinking will be how to do the bark. Uh, texture in a way that fits thematically with the rest of the uh, pieces. Um, so this is a little bit of uh, time investment, I won't kid you. Um, and you know, a lot of very small wires to get the really good details at the end of the branches. Of course, I decided, well, let's, of course, let's go for it all. Let's really, uh, you know, maximize how it could look. So um, this means that I probably won't be doing any more trees on the board uh, because I already expect to fall behind on this project already before I've even started it. <clears throat> um, but what I will be doing is using this technique to create the logs for the winches as well as for parts of the idol. Um, so once I come up with a texture for this bark, that will be the texture that will carry over onto the idol and onto the um, winch logs, if you will. And uh, of course those will be, well, the winch will be very easy to build. Uh, building the idol, I don't wanna think about it just yet because I wanna come up with a look I like and then decide how hard it is to make it. <laughs> make the look first. So I wanted to show you the tree though. 
Um, this tree is, you know, it's 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 pretty big. It's pretty big. Um, wait a minute. I'm gonna give you a sense here. It actually is not quite as big as I originally envisioned. Well, what is that? That's uh, that's roughly uh, well, not quite. Almost. About, it's. I think I'm moving this around here. Maybe maybe about seven seven inches tall. Almost eight. So that's a pretty sizable feature, um, and I think it's going to look. Um, pretty nice as a as a foreground for some of the boss hut actually uh, and I think it's still gonna feel really balanced so that's a look at the tree and just before I um, leave the tree uh, topic if you know of some modeling that's out there that incorporates bark texture that would be a good guide for me um, feel free to post a link in the comments something like that um, I am not an innovator you don't have to be you don't have to be either all you have to do is be a uh, synthesizer right I want to take other people's ideas synthesize them into my own and whenever possible I want to improve on them so um, if you see some work out there that you know of that you love cool mini maybe some diorama somebody did um, throw me a couple links give me some ideas about bark um, because I'm going to need some ideas for the idol for sure and uh, I want to make the idol I want to have fun with the idol before I go though I want to mention um, I do oh wait what, real quick on the cave um, I had an idea about having the cave bend around and then make a viewing port here so that you could see into the cave and maybe see a little scene in there. I'm not going to do that. Um, it adds a lot of complexity to the orientation of the cave because I want the back section, wherever that is, to be invisible. I don't want you to be able to see it so that it maintains that illusion that it's going somewhere into the deep netherworld. And it's also a place where I can hide some lights. So that is one of my goals is to have some lighting, like some torches maybe in the back of the cave here that you can just sort of see flickering in the glow. Um, I want the idol's eyes to light up. Originally, I wanted to have them like pulsing, you know me, um, but that is not gonna happen now. It's, uh, that adds a, a whole bunch of, of potential headache and work, but I will have them glowing. And I also would maybe like to put um, a fire flicker in the hut if people don't think that would look out of place like if this is daytime would you have a little fire going inside or torches maybe it's a pretty dark hut especially if there aren't that many windows all right so let's let's say that and um probably maybe something in the troop hut as well i did not show drawings of the troop hut um and uh i will probably do some some draft work right before i build it but it will be very similar in style to the boss hut with less uh, you know, with fewer elaborate ornamentations and, uh, you know, and a much more simple uh, doorway. Um, so in order to light these, I need to talk about how these are going to, all these, not this, what am I pointing at the Iraq mark for? Um, how all these elements are going to sit into the board. Um, so let me show you a quick example of what I'm thinking of. So I want all of the elements. Um, now this is, this doesn't fit right. Um, I don't want to talk about how I built this. I'm not happy about it, but I know what went wrong and I know how to fix it. And the next one's going to be awesome. But um, what I want is for each element, let's say this is the altar, okay? It's going to fit into a slot on the board perfectly like that. Um, so, and this, of course, the slot depth will be flush with the surface of the, the altar foundation. So each of these will be removable elements that can be pulled out uh, for storage or transport, that sort of idea. And where the items will be lit, like the idol, let's say, or this is the troop hut, um, I have uh, discovered that I can use rare earth magnets as electrical contacts by using um, con conductive epoxy. And it's a silver-based epoxy. Uh, it's really expensive, but you don't need a lot. So it's not that expensive, but it's like 10 times the cost of regular epoxy, maybe eight times the cost. But that way I can use magnets in the bases of each of the elements and then run the wiring through the base of the receiver slot uh, to the back where the batteries will be. So that is 
awesome. I'm so excited to be able to do that. And that is the way these elements will fit into the board um, with a nice tight, tight fit. I've actually got some new tools um, to work on this kind of stuff. And I will show you some of those tools when I work further, of course, on the board. But also, these are going to be my Kings of War basis for my models. And I will be showing you some of that down the road as well. And lastly, before I go, I have planned out all of the order of operations for all of the board. I don't want any surprises halfway down about, oh, wait, I should have done this first or that first or whatever. Um, every step of the way has been mapped out by me. Doesn't mean I've remembered them all. Doesn't mean there won't be some, some surprises, but uh, it is the most detailed plan I've ever put together for building a project. And I feel really, really good about that. One thing I have not mentioned, I have not mentioned how I am going to frame the board and I'm not going to talk about that yet. Um, I have ideas, but those ideas may change. And that's so far down. It's actually one of the very last steps um, that I'm not going to discuss it right now, but you can envision that it's going to be something hopefully a little nice. I want to I wanna use some of those crazy woodworking skills um, that I suffered through on the uh, cabinet build and, um, and incorporate them in here. So um, that's the plan. And let's wrap it up um, for the final shot. So hopefully you found all of that uh, interesting, entertaining, informative. Um, and before I go, I did mention I have some notable mentions. The first is that the uh, club that I am part of, the Wargaming Club, the Unplugged GT, is signing up right now for the GT, which is going to be in April. Uh, I'll have a link down below to that page. Um, we are shifting to Kings of War as the game of choice, which I am super excited about. Um, in fact, I'm going to be rebasing all of my, my miniatures to fit that. And when I do that, I'll be sharing some of that with you. I'll be using some new tools that I got and there'll be more coming. So, and I really want to get working on that. So that's going to put back some of my work on the F Sorcerer's Fortified Tower and some other things. And the horse I showed, if you didn't see any of this, it was in one of my, um, what do you, I don't know, one of my like, hey, where, where have I been kind of videos. Um, so that's back a little bit. So you can go back and check that out if you're wondering what the horse is. I tried to fix it. It's not fixable. Moving on. Um, also, I wanted to mention another um, uh, uh, YouTube channel that I recently discovered thanks to a patron who pointed it out to me. And so thank you so much for doing that. Um, and it is Kathy, I just want to see, it's Kathy Millet. Millet? It's got two T's and two L's. So hopefully, Kathy, you'll forgive me um, if I've mispronounced your last name. Uh, but she is doing, um, at least recently, little dioramas with water effects. And she's exploring magic water and some plants for it. And I found her videos really interesting. And seeing magic water in use, um, and I need to learn a little bit more, but it just really gave me a different perspective on maybe some of the materials I could use for water. So. Check out Kathy's YouTube uh, channel, and I think you'll find something there of interest. And she's just really nice, and she does this little funny thing at the end of her videos with like mini Kathy's. I won't say anymore, but it's worth checking out. Um, also, I upgraded my computer and my editing software, and I want to talk about it more in a future video. Remember, I got so much, I'm going to spread it out. But um, I just want to put a, a big thank you out there for my patrons. Um, it was expensive, and I now have a recurring cost by moving to the Adobe Cloud. And uh, it's been something I can survive based on my patron support. And I just really want to thank them um, here on the channel. I've been throwing praise at them on the Patreon site, but I just want to let them know how much I appreciate it. And um, if you're interested in helping me survive my computer upgrade or um, support me for those recurring costs for the Adobe Cloud or just because you like my channel and the effort I put into it, um, you can visit my Patreon uh, site. I'll have the uh, link down below, of course, as well. And I want to mention that I was wondering about non-patrons visiting the site and what they could see. So I logged in just as like a nobody. And as a nobody, 
I'm always somebody, but as a non-recognized member. And um, you can see the comments that are being left on the public posts. And I think even if you're not a patron, uh, you might find some of those posts um, interesting because on the monthly column, sometimes there's a little exchange we have at the end with a little extra info where the patrons are, are putting up something. And the patrons are putting up posts as well, occasionally. I want to encourage that. I love it. Feel free. More is great. Um, and I think those might be public. I have to go back in and check. So there is stuff for you to look at, even if you're not a patron, of course, the monthly columns and all of that. So um, I just wanted to mention that. Um, check it out. I realized recently that the posts actually have additional content in them. So that's that mention there. Um, and I think that wraps up for this video. So hopefully you will come back and join me for the next video. It might be a product review um, because you know I will be back soon with another Terrence Gapes video.